Yeah. Yeah. Can, can, can I ask you a favor? Yeah. When that little man comes, who's gonna be okay? Yeah, Just right. ask him. We don't want to. We want <laughs> princess. Okay. Ask him what? Ask him that we don't. His name is Big Boy. Big Boy. He's your guide. Okay. So when he comes here to you, please tell him that we don't want to. We want princess. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you, Big Boy. We want princess. <laughs> I got you. Then, I got tell you. Him when he's like, my name is Big Boy. I'm going to be okay. I said, no, sorry, sorry. We thought. <laughs> I, I got you. <laughs> yes, commonly known as the wild. This is fine. Can I set up this one just? So the name, you know, they were named by the bushmen. When they saw them, they didn't know how to call them. Then they started making that sound that goes gun gun. They said, from today, we are going to call you a gun. <laughs> <laughs> But you are not allowed to call a person a guni. You <laughs> might even get arrested. Oh. Remember, we have big five, we have ugly five. <laughs> so they are one of the ugly five. Oh. <laughs> and they're not clever at all. Hey folks, so we are at the Lion and Safari Park. As you can see, we started off with seeing a bunch of lions. We saw most of them taking a nap, snoozing, just lounging out for their afternoon nap. And this is what got me about this particular group of lions. It was the babies. The babies were so cute. They were just, they were knocked out. I don't think most of them even knew that we were there just kind of gawking at them and whatnot, but it was so cool to see. I mean, yeah, we were in a cage truck and everything, but we were literally about maybe, I don't know, anywhere from two to five, maybe 10 feet at some point from these lions. We saw an albino lino, which is really cool because I don't think I'd ever seen that before. We came across this guy who was just kind of chilling out on the side of the road. We were trying to get him to come close to us so we could pet him. Um, I really wasn't one that wanted to pet him, but everybody else was into it. I was more of capturing this on camera and, you know, making sure that the experience we had was on there. But I mean, you don't know how big an animal is until they're right up on you. Because from afar, I mean, this isn't the first time I've seen a giraffe, but from afar, they don't seem like they're that big. If anything, they just seem like they're really tall, which they are. But man, they are, they are big. Then we saw the leopards, the leopards just chilling out. I learned that the little stripe on their eyes is to help uh, with the sun and help from it glaring. But the coolest part about the entire trip the entire kind of activity for the day because this was like a three hour activity was witnessing feeding time and that's exactly what these next couple of clips are so you can see they're following the truck because they know the truck that has the food so they were following it they weren't following our truck right like because we don't have any food i mean we had food but obviously not for them and um, so you could see them all kind of getting their pieces of meat and running off to their respective places. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm cracking up because they are just so funny. It's like they, it's like you don't, when you see something like this, you don't necessarily see huge lions with huge pieces of meat. It's like you see a cat just like, ooh, I got my food, I'm gonna run away because I don't want anybody else to get it. Oh my gosh, it was so funny. But yeah, it was so cool because I had never seen this before. I'm not really all that fascinated with lions just naturally, but my husband is. And so, you know, this was like, I felt like he was like a kid in a candy store watching this because it was just so cool to see, I guess kind of like nature at work, right? Like just being able to see the lions tearing up the legs, the ribs, the whatever it was that they were eating. Um, it was so cool.
here. seen lions, antelope, wildebeest, zebra, zebra. zebra. yes, zebras, That's giraffes, terrible. yeah, this is really cool out here, I feel like it was better than the other one, but I mean this is like specific to right. lions and whatnot, so, yeah, I like, I like, <gasps> look here, <laughs> You would have seen this in some of the previous clips, but there were fences and gates everywhere because at this point in the activity or trip or whatever you want to call it, we were kind of walking. We were no longer in the truck, so we had to stay behind fences for, you know, obvious reasons. I was trying so hard to focus in on the black leopard, as you would have seen in the previous clip, but because we were outside of a fence and there was too much distance, we really weren't able to get a clear picture of it. We saw more lions, we saw hyenas, leopards, uh, who else we'd see? I think that was primarily it when we were kind of walking around. We saw so many animals, y'all. It was honestly a wonderful day. And you can see here the little, I think they were warthogs or wild pigs or something, I can't remember, were kind of running away. I thought they were so cute. So sorry about the clip being super shaky. We were still in the truck. But again, we saw a plethora of different animals, antelope, hyenas, lions, obviously, so many different animals that I feel like we didn't see before. Then for lunch, we went to the wetlands restaurant, which is like right on the reserve. And we saw this guy and we got to take some photos with him. Lunch was good. And that was pretty much the end of our trip. Later on that evening, we went to a place called Turn and Tender, which was just down the street from where we were staying. And it's where I had, according to the menu, a traditional South African dinner. So you'll see in a, in a couple clips what I ordered. I ordered a boar's vores. I'll put the name on the screen with pap and gravy. And I also got malva for the first time. My boo got a burger. He's a Texas boy. He likes his burgers. He said it was okay. And the sausage that I had, which you can see here, was pretty good. It was different. It was definitely different, but the Malva was really the, the shining star. So the next activity we got up to was test driving some cars. So we've seen a couple of different brands driving around that are pretty popular, uh, and Range Rover was one of them. So we wanted to take a look at a couple of different SUVs like the Defender, the Evoque, the Discover, Discover? Discovery. Obviously, as salesmen do, they saw us kind of moseying around and asked us if we needed any help. So we were just kind of sitting in one of these vehicles. I believe this was the Evoke. It was either the Evoke or the Discovery that we were sitting in. And the guy was just explaining all the specs and we were just kind of checking it out. Their cars are beautiful. I've never been someone who was into luxury vehicles, but as soon as I saw this Defender, y'all, I was lusting hard. I was like, ooh, I really want a Defender. So is a Defender in our future? Who knows? That's up to God, truthfully. But we were test driving and oh my gosh, guys, if anyone knows what the name is to these purple plants, purple trees or whatever, please let us know because this was probably one of the most scenic drives we've ever been on. But then we went back to Range Rover and we're just kind of looking at some of the other models. We looked at the executive version, which is one of those things that we're hoping to get further down the road, right? That's probably their most expensive um, you know SUV that they have and it was really nice but um, but yeah I just kind of could not get over the Defender I just really liked it and I hope to see it in my future one day who knows we'll see but that was test driving the Range Rover so today is Monday we're 
still in South Africa, beautiful South Africa. One thing I can tell you for sure that I've noticed between being here in the States is my mental health has been, now I'm not gonna say peak, like peak peak, but it's been close, close to peak. And there are several reasons why, and I guess I can get into that like at some point, maybe when we get back to the States, but he done pulled up a menu. My boo left uh, not too long ago, maybe about five, 10 minutes ago to go to the mall right across the street, probably to get some food because he and I have different schedules. He gets hungry at different times than I do. So he went to go get himself some food. But today we went to Land Rover, Range Rover, wherever, to look at cars because we're trying to figure out what car to get, you know, once we move here. Now, mind you, I'm just going to say this and I might repeat myself several times when I say this. Paul and I are not rolling in the dough. I don't want anybody to think that like, we just have like all this money and that we're like quiet millionaires and all this other stuff. No, we are just middle-class citizens who have worked very hard for our money. We save we budget for everything everything even on those little random like trips to like tj maxx or to lush or anything like that i budget those if it's super super random where i didn't plan for it i still will budget for it i will still look at my bank account figure out okay did all the bills come out i've got a little bit of fun money okay i can spend 75 dollars at this place and i'm not going to exceed that i do try to stick to a pretty strict budget so that i don't go overboard we you know typically budget for everything so i don't want people to hear range rover and think oh my gosh denise and paul are like making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and and like they have all this money to use and they're moving to a different country and all these other things no there's there's so many things that i could tell you guys about like moving here and all that kind of stuff but we're not there yet <laughs> so we'll kind of give y'all i guess more details and stuff depending on what it is that we feel like showcasing just to kind of just for like security sake, you know, in the future. But aside from that, we're kind of looking at cars. Like we're looking at Range Rover, but we're also looking at like Hyundai and we're also looking at Toyota. So we're, and like, he wanted to test drive Maserati. Are we buying a Maserati? No, not even close. He really wants to um, test drive a Rolls Royce as well. Are we buying a Rolls Royce? No. Um, like we have a particular budget that we are putting in place to get a car and all of that. So I just wanted to like, give a little bit of a disclaimer to let y'all know we ain't rolling in a dough. I wish we were because then I wouldn't have to work. <laughs> so I don't know if I told you guys about when we went to the spa. Okay. I, I just, all right. So we did the couples like romantic thing and I'm not like a big person on romance. Like you can put like rose petals on the bed and all that kind of stuff. Like I'll appreciate it, but I'm not like a, I expect romance 24 seven kind of girl. You know what I mean? Like I don't even consider myself sexy and like my husband will call me sexy from time to time. And I'm just like, you do realize I have like a, a house shirt on or a shirt dress on. I've got on a bonnet, socks and like slides on with my or slippers or whatever. Right? Like how the heck is that sexy? But so they did, I told, I'm pretty sure I told you what the treatments included, right? It was a half hour exfoliation treatment, full body, Swedish massage for an hour, facial uh, for an hour. And then we also got complimentary like fruit and cheese platter with like non-alcoholic champagne. So it's just a beautiful, beautiful experience. And I think for the two of us, it costs less than like $175, which is really good. And like, mind you, we could have stayed there all day, just chilled out in like the um, like chill out area. There's like a pool and stuff. We could have gone into the jacuzzi, gone into sauna. Like there are just so many different parts of the facility that are available to you when you book a service with them. The exfoliation part. So anytime I go get a massage, cause I'm not new to a massage and neither is he. But anytime I go get a massage, I typically will just have everything off except for underwear. Cause I'm like, I don't know, I just feel weird like having my complete birthday suit on when it's a um, masseuse or whatever. So that day I had worn just like some little biker shorts underneath my skirt. Cause I was just like, F underwear, <laughs> F traditional underwear, okay. So we get into the room and she's like, okay, there's, you know, about the treatments, you know, it's a half hour, you know, exfoliation thing, which I completely forgot about. And I was like, oh, okay. And so she's like, there's disposables, disposable underwear on the beds. And for me, there was a shower cap so that I didn't get stuff in my hair. So she's like, okay, put on the disposable underwear. If I can find a picture of what these looks like, I will show you. But basically it was like a paper thong, not even a thong, a paper G-string okay and a shower cap which is basically what i had to put on 
And so we're looking at each, and for my boo, he had like the same type of material that mine was made out of, but his was in the short version. We're looking at each other like, okay, we both have on like, like underwear kind of situation already. Should we get into these other ones? And so we were just like, whatever. When in Rome, do as the Romans do, right? So I put on these like paper thin G-string type underwear and he puts his on and I put on the shower cap. And I was just like, okay, whatever. Just go with the flow, right? So then you have to cover yourself with a towel. So I cover myself with a towel and um, she's like, okay, um, they come back, the because we had two therapists, right? So one was working on me and one was working on Paul. She's like, tells me to sit up from the bed. So I sit up and she takes a scrub and is just rubbing my entire body with it. Starts with the back and everything. She does my whole body, whole body, back, back of the legs, front, everything. But the thing is, when she got to the front, y'all, I'm thinking to myself, okay, she's not gonna do my chest or my stomach because I don't have anything on. So as soon as she's done like doing the, the front of like my arms and my legs, she's like, she taps me on my stomach and she's like, are you okay with me pulling this down? Meaning the towel, mind you, the towel's like long ways on me, right? And I was like, sure, whatever. So I'm just sitting there, topless, okay? With these string, like these paper G string on the bottom with the towels like covering my bottom area and I'm completely exposed. Now mind you, like my husband's next to me, obviously he's seen my body, so there's no problem with that, but I'm in front of two strangers and I'm just like, whatever. You know, they're black women just like me. We have the same stuff, whatever. So I was just like, so then Paul was like, like later on Paul was like, yeah, when I looked over at you, I was like, I just couldn't believe, I was like, it's just like all of a sudden it was just like tits up. And I was like, yeah, I was kind of like, what is going on here? This is a crazy experience. But let me tell you, the exfoliation felt so, so good. It was hilarious, but it was also so great. And I forgot that it was like a romantic thing, right? So then they're like, okay, you know, once they were done, they're like, okay, you guys can get into the shower and rinse off. So we rinse each other off, all that kind of stuff. But it was just kind of like, a strange experience but also hilarious at the same time because I was just like I've never done anything like this before but we would definitely go back it was just really really nice so the next day or maybe even the day after that we decided to check out the mall of the south which is in Joburg south for any of those who are wondering where it is obviously you can look it up on the map but when we got there, it was in the middle of load shedding. So a lot of stores weren't open or were just kind of shut down for a little bit until the electricity came back on. But we went into this one store. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but it reminded me a lot of Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx, Joann's, you know, kind of crafty, kitschy places that you see here in the States. It had Halloween stuff, of course, because we were there in October. I, of course, couldn't help but touch everything because I'm a two-year-old child. You know, how it, it how it goes in those situations. <laughs> you just can't help but touch everything. But um, when we were visiting different malls, we went into a lot of the home decor places. So there's a lot of kind of repeats in a lot of these malls, which is fine because, you know, the selection from one mall to the next may be very different, even though they're the same store. So in this particular store, we saw a lot of home decor that we liked, a lot of office decor, including desks and chairs that we really liked as well. So it wasn't too bad of a stop. Especially this one. It's so pretty. My style is mid century modern, so this is totally my style. I'm telling you guys, we were in so many home decor stores. That's literally all we looked at. That's how you know that we've reached peak adulthood. Our our idea of fun is literally going into a home decor spot 
checking out different dining sets and bed sets and and going, hmm, I think that'll look really nice in the house whenever we get a house. It was it was too funny. Look at Mr. Williams and his <laughs> presidential desk. Oh, let me step into the office. So what's on, what's the order of business today? Let's take over the world. <laughs> so then after the Mall of the South, we decided to head back home. I was trying to capture the lightning in while we were in the car because it was intense. It was intense. It was like their raining season at the time, but... That was it for our adventure week part two. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>